Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my, yeah, it is on. Um, OK, so there's a lot we're going to be accomplishing in the next 20 minutes. So I'm going to need help from you guys. I'm going to pass these Sharpies out to the, person, the first person. What we need is like every few people to have a Sharpie. Now, if you don't have a rock, the bucket of rocks. If you don't have a rock, oh, thank you. <laughs> this is an experiment, and I appreciate you guys being a part of it. I think you don't have, kind of have a choice because you're here, I think. <laughs> here you go, if you don't mind. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I'll let everyone get a rock. <laughs> Okay, so if you don't have a rock, put your hand up. Okay, so we're passing out rocks. While we're passing out rocks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know we don't have too much time, so I'll, I'm just gonna plow right through. <laughs> or not, I'll wait till we're done with the rock. Okay, it looks like, okay, everyone has a rock. Okay, so I, I'm gonna get started. Um, so this, this talk is an experiment. I've done something kind of similar once, um, and it was a ton of fun, um, but this is the first time we're doing this, definitely the first time with rocks, and no, they're not for throwing. Um, and no, they're not for weighing people. I was gonna try to make a joke about like stones, you get it, I don't know, <laughs> it didn't work out, <laughs> sorry. Um, so anyway, so this is um, a talk designed to help us do something together as a community. Um, uh, the community here in London, I'm always hearing about you guys um, with the, the London user group, and um, I got to hear all about the Meteor Meetup in London, and um, we have community in New York, hopefully for, for the next 20 minutes, I can be a part of your London community. Um, and, awesome, great. <laughs> um, well, we try to do something together uh, and, and help each other a little bit. So, you have supplies um, for this talk, and your supplies are a rock. Um, I've got some stickers up here we'll be handing out shortly, and a Sharpie. And I promise, um, I promise in a few minutes it'll, this will start to make sense, and this isn't some kind of weird swag we put together for you. <laughs> Um, it was kind of funny, um, I told these guys on Sunday, on Sunday, I was like, hey, so do you think we can get like a 150 rocks? And they were like, they were like yeah, yeah, definitely, we'll find rocks. And then like two hours later, they had located this big bag of rocks, so that was really awesome. Really resourceful conference. Um, okay, so, uh, well first, before we get started, um, raise your hand if you live in London. Okay. And now raise your hand if you don't live in London. Okay, great. <laughs> that was about 50-50, actually. All right, I just wanted to get his hand raising because this is going to be really, you're going to have, there's going to be a lot of participation in this talk. So I wanted to get used to um, being active participants and, and, um, and raising hands. But, uh, okay, so step one, pick up your rock, if you have it under your seat or you have it, most people have it in their hands. Okay, you have a rock. Um, and then, you're gonna use the Sharpie you have or you're gonna get it from your neighbor after they use it. Um, so you can just spy a neighbor that has a Sharpie. Because uh, we're, we're gonna take two minutes or a few minutes and do this. What we're gonna do with our rocks is we're gonna write down a technology that we've been procrastinating, that thing that you need to learn for work or for you, that you've been putting off, um, you're super stressed about it, you don't even wanna think about it, um, for me, um, for me, that's JavaScript testing frameworks. I've been like putting that off for probably a good year and a half now. <laughs> so here are some ideas, if you need ideas. <laughs> They're important. So I'll let you guys take like two minutes and write on your rock. Yeah. 
I still see people writing, I'm just gonna give it a minute. <laughs> Okay, does everyone have their rock with their thing written on it? The We're all set. Okay, I see people with rocks, I see people with things written on them. So we'll, um, we'll go next steps. Okay, now step two. Is I would have everyone be I would ask everyone to be quiet, but that's the opposite of step two. Because step two is um, you have people to your right and left and in front of you and people near you. Um, I I'd like you. I've already said mine out loud to you guys, so you know that was my moment of uh, sharing what I what I don't know and what I need to be better at. But if you guys could just take a minute and um, talk to the people close to you about the thing that you put on your rock and say I need to learn about, and then your technology. So I'll let you guys get started, just kind of talking about what's on your rock. Or you can just show people. You can just hold it up. soundtrack of like a lot of people talking. Okay, you guys, are you ready for next steps? Thank you for the help of people yelling. <laughs> okay, great. So, um, and now step three, uh, let's clap for ourselves because we just, we're super vulnerable. We told each other what we suck at. So that's great. <laughs> okay, great. All right, awesome. So that was, that was, now we're for the, through the first particip uh, painful participation part, so let's keep going. Um, so when, I did a lot of research about learning recently because um, it's something I'm super um, passionate about because of um, my experience in the learning community with Girl Develop It, and it's something that, as, of course, as a software developer, I do all the time. Um, and I learned, I learned there are four stages of learning. You have unconscious incompetence, where you don't know what you know, we don't know, and you don't know that you need to learn it. So that's, we're past that point. Um, you have conscious incompetence, which is where some of us are, where we know what we need to learn, we don't really know anything about it. We just know it's a thing, and know we need to be better at it, but we don't know where to start. And then there's conscious competence, which is a place that we reach that um, we have, we know some things, we're still working on it, we maybe did our hello world, um, and we want to keep going to get to the point of unconscious competence. The point where you can just open up Vim, you don't need to Google, you're ready to go, it's second nature to you, you can just do it and you can go. Um, and so that's our goal, unconscious competence. And that's our goal with what we've written on our rocks today most likely, I bet. So being a software developer in general, you're um, constantly learning. I've been doing this um, for 12 years professionally, um, and I, um, I have, I, the learning never stops. Um, I'm on my, let's, I, I wanna um, uh, actually pull the crowd. If you um, have had more than one language specialty in your career, Raise your hand. Don't hit the mic. Okay. Uh, if you have more than two, keep your hand up. If you've had more than three, keep your hand up. 
If you've had more than four, keep your hand up. If you've had more than five, keep your hand up. If you've had more than six, keep your hand up. I <laughs> had no idea. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, um, I'm, on, I'm on number three. I, I, in the beginning, I did um, SQL, like Microsoft SQL. Um, I was a DBA, and then I did a lot of C Sharp and ASP.NET, and then I moved over to JavaScript like four years ago. So, and even on that path, which I'm sure is something that you've experienced, um, even on the path of a new specialty or a new language, um, there's all these little things you have to learn about it. Like, I've been doing JavaScript for a while now. There is so much about JavaScript I don't know. There's so much. It's not just the good parts. It's all the parts, right? There's so many libraries and frameworks. And every time I'm at a thing, I learn about something new that I don't know, that I've never heard of in my life. Every time I go to a conference, I'm like, oh, that looks like a really cool library. I've never heard of it. And maybe it's useful. I hope I learn something about it. Um, and sometimes, then six months from that point, since, like six months later, I'm like, oh wow, I have to learn this thing now because I have to work on a project that has it. Um, so we're constantly learning. Um, we are constantly learning new languages and frameworks. This is not really, um, it's not really coming up. This is, but uh, I'll put these online. This chart is a chart of um, languages, all its parent languages, and different variations of it. And this is old. Like, I don't even think Ruby's on here. This is like way before, before those days. And I bet in the room, we have thousands of languages and frameworks between us. Um, if we opened up a development shop, we would be set. <laughs> it would be, we'd be millionaires. Um, so all, after all that, um, why are we still stressed about learning new things? Um, if you ever want to have fun, search for a computer stressed in Google. <laughs> I mean, most people are like this, but this lady was eating her computer, so it's like, you gotta go with this one. Um, but yeah, like we're, I'm still stressed about it. It's, I'm, like, the things that I need to learn, I mean, it's not just JavaScript testing. It's, there's a list like this long of the things that I need to learn or just want to learn. Like the things I'm like, that shit is cool. I want to learn about that. Um, it grows all the time. Um, so, oh, this, um, this slide is ugly. Sorry, I do. <laughs> and you can't really see, I'm just gonna read this. They tell you not to read slides out loud, but I thought this was an amazing answer. Um, so this is a, um, there's a thread on Stack Overflow, and this response got, I think, 75 upvotes. Um, it was one of the top responses to how do I learn something, how do you learn something new in software? So I'm, I'm just gonna read every line. Um, so this guy, his name um, was Cyril. He wrote, I sit and fret for a month over the fact that I'm going to have to learn something new all over again. I lament, whoa, and that's even before I've read a single page of documentation. I read blog posts, which are usually too complex for my level, and I end up feeling how lousy I am and how awesome everyone else is who understand what they're talking about. When I've had enough of feeling lousy and the language still hasn't been replaced by something newer and cooler, I dig up some beginner documentation. It still looks complex. I read the various interpretations and compare notes between different articles, how-tos, and help files. I feel that I may be finally able to write a hello world if I overexerted. I am finally able to write a hello world. And I immediately wonder why the hell am I even doing this where I can write such a natty, I don't know what that means, uh, I'm guessing like cool or nasty, little hello world in the language that I already know. I read more documentation, blog, articles, books. I write snazzier hello world with some fancy dialogues thrown in. I read more documentation, blogs, articles, books. I think of something that I could actually make in that language. I read more documentation, blog, articles, books. I start building that app and I'm promptly stuck in a million places. I read more documentation, blogs, and articles and books. I ask a noob question about it on Stack Overflow and make an ass of myself. I read more documentation, blogs, articles, books. I finally know enough code to make the first few pieces of my app. I read more documentation, blogs, articles, books. I finish my app and see how awesome it is. I read more documentation, blogs, articles, books. I see how lousy my app actually is. I feel awesome because now I actually know what lousy is in that language. <laughs> I thought that was really neat because I feel like 
Um, no matter that is usually you know almost the exact path, if not like mixing those up again a little bit. I, I face with every um, la new language I learn. And when you look at some common threads that you saw in that um, article, um, uh, sorry, the, in that uh, response, you see um, some things. A lot of times it's not enough time um, where he, you know, he's stressed about it and he didn't know what, um, when he was gonna find time to work on it. He didn't understand the material often. He couldn't find the material that was good for him or what he was looking for. And at first, it's super tedious, and that's the hardest part, right? The hardest part is just getting started. And after he got started even, he would get stuck because he would get to a point and not know what to do next. So I tried to take these out, and I'm gonna talk about some of the um, tips that I have for these different things, but um, guess what, I'm not an expert. Um, we all are, and guess what, none of us are an expert. So if anyone has something to share that they feel that would be um, a great way to deal with this, please do just yell things or whatever, or put your hand up, um, because I think we could all use some tips from each other. Here are some things that I've found useful when attacking these things. Um, so not enough time is a huge one, because we don't have enough time to do our jobs and you know, spend time with our families, and like some of us, um, which was awesome, you know, when you're in school, your, your job is to learn. My brother's um, university, and I tell him, you're the best time in your life, because it is your job to learn right now. Um, but we no long, it's no longer our jobs to learn, it's our jobs usually to build software. And though most employers are pretty understanding, we just can't sit there learning all the time. So we have to make some of our personal time to learn this stuff. One thing that I have found super useful in these cases is taking five minutes a day, um, just five minutes, or just 10 minutes, a very small period of time, or making just a baby step. Like, today, I'm gonna get that dialog box to work, and that's it. I'm gonna get to the point where I get a pop-up, and that's it. And then I'm gonna walk away, and then tomorrow, I'm gonna get X. And setting super small goals, and not getting mad when you miss it. Like, today, I couldn't do it, I'm so stressed out, now I have to do double, you know, or triple, I haven't done it three days in a row, I'm just gonna spend three hours now, and then we end up getting ahead of ourselves. I find putting aside a tiny baby bit of time um, and doing a little bit every day makes it less stressful, um, and setting little goals like, I'm gonna read the next five pages today, and that's it. Um, it allows us to finally get to the point where we're fluent. Don't understand the material. Um, so, we're all different kinds of learners, right? Something that we learned in school. Some people learn by reading, some people learn by doing. Um, when you don't understand the material, you might be looking at the wrong material. I, um, I used to buy those, those huge O'Reilly books all the time, and they're great, O'Reilly books are awesome. I have read the first chapter of at least a dozen O'Reilly books. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, they're super hard, and I'm not, I'm not a reader. Like, I, I mean, I, I like reading. I love reading fiction. But when it comes to reading technical books, it's super boring, and I hate it. Um, and I ended up just looking through and like getting the diagrams and being like, oh, I can't wait till I understand what that means. Um, and it's not um, my way of learning is I, I do things. Like, I'll, I'll build something or make something. Um, so we all, um, we all have that thing for ourselves. So if you're having trouble understanding the material, Maybe try a different medium like videos or um, sitting with a friend or anything like that. Can't find the material. This is valid. I mean, so we have Google and we have Stack Overflow and we have things like Node School and all kinds of YouTube videos. But sometimes you can't, you, even like if there's a new technology, usually there's nothing out there, so it could be really hard. Um, I think, and something that especially applies here being so close to London is meetups are a great place to find material because you can go, there are other people there that maybe already know it, they might be fluent already, um, and they can, um, you just ask them, like, hey, what, um, how did you learn more about this? One thing I think, and I think comes with maturity as a developer, is learning to say that you don't know something or you're bad at it. 
I think in the beginning when you first, I was embarrassed for, I would not ask a question forever. Because I was like, I should know this. This is something I should know. And this person's going to know I should know. I'm going to get fired. Like they're going to be like, oh my God, you're an idiot. I had no idea. Um, but after a while, you learn to say, hey, I suck at this thing. And, and while it can be daunting, going up to someone at a meetup and being like, how did you learn about backbone? They can say, oh, yeah, well, this guide was really great for me. So that's a great way to find material if you don't have it. Getting past the tediousness of things at first. Um, so when you think about things being tedious, um, you immediately get stressed. When I think of something I need to tackle, I'm immediately stressed out. And I just think of myself hunched over at that desk, just like um, making myself sit there, you know, making myself not go on Reddit, you know, not, um, not getting distracted. I'm going to focus on this thing. Um, and sometimes it could be super helpful to give yourself some extra comfort to learn this thing. One thing I learned really recently that was really helpful to me is never use the word just. Like I was talking about, I was talking to someone how stressed I was about how my apartment gets messy all the time and, and it happens. And I'm like, seriously, I just need to learn how to clean my apartment. Like that's it. I just need to learn how, how hard could it possibly be? Like pick up your clothes. And they were like, why don't you stop saying the word just? Because it sounds like it might be something that's hard for you. It sounds like maybe you're not great at that. And if you could just be easier on yourself and just stop saying just, just clean your apartment and understand that it's something that's going to be difficult at first for you, then maybe it'll be a little easier, which was super helpful for me. My apartment's a little cleaner. Um, getting stuck right after you get started. This is something, um, this is something that is difficult um, because you can get started, you can get to a point, even when you're following a tutorial, you get to a point and then you're like, well, what's next? Or sometimes you follow a tutorial and it's wrong. Do you ever have that happen? I've had that happen like five times, or no, a million times, where it's like, um, I, I get to the point, it should be working, and it's obviously out of date, or whatever this thing I'm following, just, it's not right. And the person left it on their blog for some reason, um, because they read it, wrote it forever ago and they don't even know. Um, and then you're stuck, and then you don't know where to go next. Um, and the thing I find that's super helpful here is, uh, well, first of all, um, so this is part of step two, but raise your hand if you are willing to help someone else get unstuck. Awesome. This is like pretty much everyone. <laughs> it's like one guy back there doesn't want to help you. <laughs> okay, great. Well, then um, we'll all uh, participate in step two, or in the next, in the next participatory part. Something I think helps a lot after you're stuck is a coach. Finding someone else who is good at your thing to say, like, listen, could you, could you make sure I get past this point? Or do you mind just taking a look at what I've written? It just doesn't work. And the blog post said it should. And I don't know why. Can you take a couple minutes and take a look? Um, coaches um, are really helpful. And we've all been in that situation. And obviously, everyone's hands went up really fast. So we all recognize what the power of having a coach. OK, so we already got past this part. So who wants to help? Everyone wants to help. Now, I'm going to get started now. And this is probably going to go till after the end of this. So this is, um, I'm going to hand out these <laughs> stickers to everyone in the front here. Do you mind? Yeah. Maybe like. Hand them out to the rows, and then. Do you want to take a sheet? And once you get once you get your sticker, um, peel off a sticker and put it on your name badge. You can either put it on your daytime badge or your nighttime badge. It doesn't matter. How cool are these? <laughs> So this is going to take a few minutes, um, and so I'm going to keep going while, um, while we're all doing this, because it's going to take a few. We're going to go through and cut out, I was, I was going to go through and cut out all the little tags, but I thought that would take me a few minutes. Um, so OK, so when you get your sticker, put it on your name badge and write something on it that you are amazing at, something that is the opposite 
of you know something that you know that is your strength. And you don't have to be like, you don't have to be the biggest, like you don't have to be Brandon Ike or anything, or you know someone. <laughs> you can be, um, it's just something that you like talking about and something that you're excited about. Okay, and, and then the next step for this, so there's two last steps. So the first next step is tonight we have dinner and we have an after party and we have a lot of time to talk to each other. So try to find someone whose rock matches your lanyard and ask them if they can help you learn your thing because I think that's step one past getting unstuck. Um, and the second thing is, what do we do with our rock? I thought this quote was funny. <laughs> um, so you, now you have, this, you have this glamorous rock written on it. You're going to take it home with you, and you're going to put it somewhere. And it's either going to be somewhere you remember, or you can throw it in a drunk junk drawer, or whatever. But you're not going to throw it out until you feel you've gotten to the point where you're comfortable with this thing. So that every time you look through your drunk drawer and like I'm throwing stuff out, you're going to pull out your rock, and you're going to be like, oh, god damn it, I still don't know about JavaScript testing frameworks. Um, and, but it'll be a great feeling when you can actually throw away your rock and understand that you have, from this point, mastered something that has been stretching you out for a while. So that's our community exercise. Thank you, guys. Enjoy. Your rock. It's really easy to pull it out this time, though. Uh, yeah. Okay, so. Take a little bit of a script on everyone. In the schedule, it says we're going to have a Q&A. Thank you. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of an error. I am too much. Um, we didn't have the, the right layout in here to do Q&A. So instead, uh, Something really interesting, almost everyone in here bought a ticket to this conference before they knew who was speaking or any of the topics. Like, you just threw your money in and said, I hope this is good, uh, <laughs> which is incredibly inspiring. Um, so we've got another four speakers, we're going to do lightning talks, and they're going to be amazing. Uh, we're gonna <laughs>